Victoria. Welcome to Who Can It Be Now, the podcast. I'm a psychic medium, teacher, coach, and founder of Membership for Your Soul and Soul Finder Academy. And today is going to be a mishmash of stuff because I wanted to be, well, I don't know that I wanted to be prepared. Today's January 4th and podcasts are supposed to be evergreen, you know, as best as they can be. But, um, you know, they just can't sometimes because things happen when you're recording them and you have to like just share what's happening and what's going on. And I have to do that right now with all of you. So we are entering into the beginning. We are in the beginning of 2021. And later on today, I'm going to be doing a uh, prediction call all about 2021. And I do this um, every year. I think this is like the sixth year I've done it for um, Jennifer McLean. And so before I get into what 2021 is about and some of the stories I want to share with you and the things I want to share, um, I wanted to also tell you, I just did a live for my membership for your soul program. And some of it's going to come from that too. Um, but there's something else I was going to tell you. But anyway, let's just keep going. Because I just came back from vacation. Today's my first day back from vacation. I was on vacation pretty much for like three weeks, even though I was doing some work. For the most part, I wasn't. I was playing tennis. I had a list of things I wanted to get done. And I didn't get really anything done because I played, 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 and played. Now it's raining outside, so I'm, I'm kind of okay with being here. Even though I do enjoy doing this podcast, I love it. I do enjoy my communities, Membership for Your Soul and Soul Finder Academy. We're also going to be doing a SaaS experience, a live SaaS experience. So if you go to joinsass.com, you can read about it and join us. And if you're listening to this at another date when we don't have a live going on, that's okay. There'll be something on that page. Um, I'm sure there will be for you. So, uh, one of the biggest things I want to share about 2021 that I think is super important is about choices and habits. I normally, when I do my predictions, um, I usually go month by month and I share what's going to happen each month. And I consider myself a future reader. And what that means is when I used to do readings, um, private readings, I would give a lot of future based information. I very rarely talked about the past or even talked that much about the present circumstances, except that they were a grounding a foundation for where the person was going. And the reason why I did that is because my guides were very interested in where you were headed, not where you came from, um, not where you were stuck, where you really wanted to go. And I considered myself someone who could really read your soul, see the light in your soul that you could not see maybe in yourself, or you were hoping somebody could see in you so that you could believe it in yourself. I believe that every single one of us is gifted I believe that we all have talents, we all have gifts, and I also believe that they can open up at any given time, at any given moment. I also believe that it's super important to get in touch with them because it's going to make your life so much easier to navigate. When I didn't know how to use my gifts and um, they were in and out and they were fleeting, my life was a friggin' mess. And I was also making really stupid choices, you know, with my life. So when I look back at the things that I did and the choices I made, no wonder my life was a friggin' mess, you know? Um, but when I got in touch with my gifts and I got in touch with my guides, life really changed for me. It became a little bit easier to navigate, uh, even much so now that when something happens that can be really dis devastating or really upsetting to me, I lean into my guides, listen to them, and I take their advice. And I know that I'm not alone. So I was talking with somebody um recently. And they were saying that a lot of what I say on my podcast, they don't understand because it's new to them. So they've been looking it up. And so I want to talk a little bit about what guides are first. So let's start there. I don't know where I'm going to go today with you. Well, actually, I do know what we're going to summarize, what we're going to end up in this um, recording today is what you need to do in order to move your needle forward so that you can make your dreams happen. We're going to talk about goals and intentions and habits and choices. And, um, I feel that this is really important. It's important for every single person, especially as we move into this 2021 and beyond. So guides are beings that are with us, whether we, um, they're with us when we are born, some come in and leave. It's such a long topic that actually I probably will do an entire podcast about guides and how you can call in a guide and how um, you can work with a guide. But basically, I've talked about this before, but they can be anything. They can be archangels. They can be ascended masters like Jesus and Mary and St. Germain. They could be your Uncle Joe. 
Um, they could be the trees outside your window. They could be the planets, the moon. This is my belief system. They could be a crystal. It's really energy. It's communicating with energy. Guides, from what I know, there are certain guides that have been with me um, for the beginning, and I believe they'll be with me until the end. There are other guides that move in and out. You can also call on an expert guide. You could say you want to start getting better at watercolor painting. I don't know any watercolor artists, so I'm not even going to pretend to say. So you get in touch with Picasso. I don't think Picasso did watercolor. Didn't he do oil? So I don't know what medium he used, but you would get in touch with the spirit of that particular guide and start working with them. And some people may be like, well, how do I know Picasso wants to work with me? Well, if you're interested in Picasso, there's a good chance that that energy of Picasso wants to work with you. Now, is Picasso really hanging out in the ethers? I don't know about that. That's a whole other discussion. Um, in other dimensions, it might be just the energy of Picasso and the energy of Picasso that we know that we can tap into. So this is a much bigger topic that I'm not going to dive into right now. But just know guides always have your back. They're always working with you. They, they are the reflections of your soul. I have a uh, webinar that I have out there that's called Voice of Your Soul. And I think if you go to marilynaloria.com forward slash voice, you can watch it. And it, I teach a bit on how you can ask guides questions, how you can understand the symbols, things like that. So our guides are reflections of our soul. What does that mean? Well, our soul, in my opinion, is light, is everything we are, is our wisdom, is our truth, is our joy, is our passion, is our inspiration. And when we get lost in our own darkness, for whatever reason, our guides are with us. They're almost like they're, they're shining a spotlight on your soul and they're reflecting back to you your light. So imagine when you're going through a difficulty and you're feeling darkness and you lean into your guides and they just have this bright light that they're shining back at you, you can get the answers. You can find out what you need to know. And sometimes just the mere fact of leaning into them brings you comfort. So that is what guides do. I suggest that you do get in touch with your guides. It's super important that you do it. I also have a list of guides. So I'm going to give you that URL and that's marilynaloria.com guide uh, forward slash guide, marilynaloria.com, marilynaloria.com forward slash guide. And you can um, pick a number from one to 10 and get a guide. Some of you may have already gotten these guides, but I rewrote them a little bit last year. And I also did personalized messages. And we also send you a meditation of see and feel your guide. So we have a lot of stuff out there. I have a lot of stuff on my YouTube channel that you can learn about guides if you're not ready to join one of my programs, although my programs are kick-ass. They're incredible because we have teachers all around the world teaching a membership for your soul. And it's amazing what we cover in there. It's everything from crystals to astrology to dreams to working with uh, your higher self and so many things, clairvoyancy and all that. Okay, so let's talk about this year, 2021. So... I'm going to share a little bit about my own story first and uh, take you into an experience for yourself that I want you to do. So I took off and had time off and I needed it. I was exhausted. Um, I was running a lot of groups with Soul Finder Academy and Membership of Your Soul. And um, as much I, I love, 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 love my community. They are phenomenal. I was really tired and needed to take off. And I am lucky that I live in a place that I just get to play a lot of tennis because there's a lot of tennis here. There's a lot of hiking. There's a lot of trails. So I just really threw myself into that and had a lot of fun and just kept looking at my list every single day of all those things I wanted to do and was like, you know what? I'm going to go play. Um, but towards the end of the year, I always think about what it is that I want to accomplish in the new year as it's coming up. And I believe in goals. I don't mind goals because here's the thing. I'm not attached to my goals. My goals are just like destinations. It's like if you're going to travel to Arizona or you're going to go to Barcelona, Spain, it, that's what my goal is to me. I'm planning a trip to a destination. It's not once I reach that destination, that's it. I take my vacation in Barcelona and it's over. It's what comes next, you know? So my destinations, my goals are just, they're just these little uh, marks on my life. They're just on my journey. They're ways to go there. So I don't get overly crazy about them. If I don't reach them, matter of fact, at the end, usually at the end of the year, I read past, I read my goals 
and see what I've completed. I didn't do that this year because I know that I didn't accomplish a bunch of them. And I don't care because I had a good year. I stayed on path. I stayed on course. I made good choices. I focused on my business. I focused on the marketing strategies in my business. I love, love, love growing um, my business. So, So goals are good things. So you might want to call them dreams or intentions or something like that. So I was thinking about my goals for 2021. And most importantly, I was thinking about what I wanted to commit to in myself. Because I got honest with myself, there's certain things that I really want to change in my life. And they're not changing. And they're not changing because I'm not making choices and decisions and changing my habits to make these things change. I do. I do a lot of great things. I take care of myself. I eat well. I hike. I only spend time with people I really like. I I don't waste my time in situations or experiences that I don't want to be. I excuse myself real quick and get the heck out of there. Um, I spend a lot of time alone because I like it. I spend a lot of time playing tennis. So I do things that I love to do. But I recognized at the end of 2020 that the needle wasn't moving forward in certain parts of my life. And if you want to break out your life in segments, you could think about finances, relationship, home, and career. So that's usually when I I have a channeling class that's in membership for your soul. And the second, no, it's dancing with your guides. I have a teach people how to communicate with their guides. So my first class is uh, the 28 day challenge, constant communication with your guides. The second one is dancing with your guides, where I teach you to have a guide in each one of those sectors, those areas. So you could do that. You can have a guide that's going to teach you how to have a really organized, great home, um, a loving home, how to space clear. You can have a guide that's going to help you to have optimal health. You can have a guide that's going to help you to have an incredible relationship, love relationship and friends. And you can have a guide that's going to teach you how to do really well in your career and make money and finance. Career usually comes with finances. So I was thinking about my goals and what I wanted to do and Really, what struck me is my commitment to myself. So I'm part of a mastermind. I have a coach that I pay for. And I was in the mastermind in early December, and I may have shared some of this, but I'm going to share it again. And I had a one of those come to Jesus moments with myself where I was like, holy, I'm not going to curse on this. I'm, I'm promising not to curse anymore. I tend to curse a lot on the tennis court, and I'm stopping that. I scare people because I'll be like, you fucker, when they hit the ball at me you know, or I miss the ball. All right. Once I called a girl a bitch, um, but it's all in jest. It's all in fun. I'll be like, you bitch. And I realized I can't do that anymore. Cause now I hired a coach and I'm, and she, <laughs> and I'm getting serious about my game. So with that said, I'm going to try not to curse on my podcast too. I had one of those moments with myself where I went, wow, there are certain things where the needle is not moving forward and I need to make great change in my life. And the only one who's responsible for that great change is me. Yeah, we could sit here and we could look at all the things that are happening in the world. And I could sit here and blame it on certain things, but I'm not going to do that. Now, I have to do a disclaimer here. It's super important to me that I do a disclaimer. It is not lost on me that some people are going through some tremendously difficult times, maybe more than some. And I have an incredible amount of compassion for them. I don't sit here and judge them. I... I, I I can't and I'm not going to. So please know that when I say things like, this is what works for me, I'm not sitting here going, um, that person whose restaurant is closing isn't dealing with hardship. What I hope I can do if, if that person was to come upon me and listen to me, maybe help change a perspective to find another solution in a very difficult time. Because that's what I've done in my own life. When my life is, was crumbling down and falling apart and everything was just coming apart at the seams, I would get up and find another solution. I had to. Otherwise, I would have ended my life. So because it worked for me, that's what I share with others. I was listening to someone this weekend and he talks about his own um, point of views and he's a, he's, a, he's a success teacher. He's not with us any longer. And he started going on about Californians and how they like they're just rubbing crystals together and hanging out underneath a pyramid. And they think their life is going to change. And he's like, your life's not going to change. And I'm actually a believer that your life isn't going to change if you just do that. It's okay to do that, go into meditation, but then make choices to change it. And he said, you know, but that's my point of view. If it works for you, great. But you're paying me for my point of view. So um, that was a paid seminar. So these are my point of views. 
So I had that moment where I was like, I'm not going to curse. I need to make some real big commitments and change. And some of these areas are relationship, love relationship, um, some of those finances, some really deep moments with some of us, right? Especially spiritual people. A lot of you are going to relate to the fact that you may have not been in a relationship for a long time. Um, your finances may have been messy. And there might be different things. Maybe it's your health. Maybe you, it's the 20 pounds you're carrying around. You have to get serious with yourself because in 2021, literally, I feel like the universe, God, source, whatever you believe in, has just plopped you down into the driver's seat and it's watching to see what you're going to do. And you go into the glove compartment and there's no map. And you turn on the navigation system and it's got glitches, glitches in it. And the reason why that's happening is because you haven't decided and committed to where you want to go. So you're kind of like hanging out in the driver's seat and the universe is like, all right, what does she want? I don't know what to give her. This is what we discuss in SAS experience. This is synchronicity, but we start with the subconscious thinking. So 2021, I can't give you a future reading. I would go month by month by month and give them. Can't do it. It's like I look out there and the slate's clean. And I'm like, what's on that board? And I can't see it. That's never happened to me in all this time of doing this work. But I knew when it happened that it was something important. So I'm weaving a lot of stories together for you guys because that's the way I work sometimes. When I, if you ever got a reading from me, you would see how fast I talk. I talk really, really fast in readings and I jump around a lot and then it summarizes because I get so much information at once. So I'll bring it back to my own story. I had a, a moment where I said, I'm going to commit to myself. I'm committing to change. I'm not going to believe the story out there that life is hard or I'm this age and it's not going to happen. It's too late for me. What's that bullshit? I'm committed to change. And so then the next question was, well, what do you need to do to commit to change? And I shared the story about my Atlanta when I was in Atlanta during the Olympics and how I was a puddle crying every single moment and decided to change my life. And I took necessary steps to make that change. So imagine yourself right now in that driver's seat and imagine yourself in a car that you want to be in, not the old jalopy or the car that's falling apart with the, the half, uh, the tires that need to be filled. I want you to see yourself in the car you want to drive. I drive the car I want to drive. I love my car. Think about the car. See yourself in the driver's seat. Feel the leather, if that's what it is. If you're vegan, feel the incredible, nice, beautiful upholstery. See the dashboard. Maybe it's got wood in there. You're in the driver's seat. You're in this beautiful vehicle. God, universe, source has just given it to you. Now God, universe, source is saying, what do you want? What do you want? And I want you to decide right now, health-wise, what do you want? Maybe you want to be 10 pounds thinner. Be realistic about it. Don't, don't be like, um, I want my body that I had. I had an incredible sick body at like 32, 33, 34, probably my 30s. Um, and I don't think when I work, I work out, I don't think I want that body. I think I want an even better body. So think about health, what you want. You can even pause this recording right now and think about it and make it something attainable, but something you also want. Allow yourself to dream. So I have a certain weight I want to reach. I'm about four pounds from it. And it's been hard getting to that four pounds. And I'm not going to tell you I've I'm not struggling because on Saturdays I eat whatever I want. And this whole vacation, I ate whatever I wanted, but I also exercised a lot. So think about that and then allow it to be. And how do you allow it to be? Well, that's mindset. Start telling yourself a different story. Start identifying with it. I am a blah, blah, blah weight, or I am feeling physically healthy. I am not tired. I have energy. I'm able to do yoga. 
I'm able to stretch. Some people have real physical ailments, right? So when I, whenever I kind of come upon that in my students, I don't want to deny that it's their truth, but I ask them to go deeper. I once was working with a woman who was um, visually impaired and we were working on clairvoyancy. And I know I was like, go in there. What do you see? What do you imagine you see? You know, if, if I'm working with somebody in clairvoyancy and they're having a child seeing, I'm like, what do you feel? What do you hear? That can still go with seeing. There's so many ways to teach around the limitations. So go into that and commit to something in your health area. And there's a reason why I'm telling you to do this. So then go into career. Now, some of you may not want a career. Your career may be that you get to play all day. And because you get to play all day and you're having so much fun, you're able to help your neighbors or your elderly neighbor. You volunteer somewhere. Let your career be with finances so that there's flow. So if you're facing an insurmountable amount of debt, get real with yourself about that. If you're facing a belief system that you can't make more than a certain amount of money, get real with that because what that does is limits you. There's always potential. There's always solution. You may think it's impossible, Marilyn. I'm retired. This is my set income. It's limited. That's some truth there, but there's always other possibilities. If you play in the world of possibility, anything can happen. It really can. It's when we come at the world with limitation, which you're not allowed to do in 2021, that you're going to get stuck in limitation. Now, again, I'm not here to argue with you what you know your truth to be. I'm here to invite you into different thinking. So what I would say to you, if there's some of you who's on limited income, I would say, what if there was possibility of something else, even if it was walking down the street and finding $50 on the ground or starting to get gift certificates for things that people just started to give you because you were helping them? Abundance comes in many forms. So get clear about career and finances. Set a goal. Then go to relationships. Now, relationships are love relationships. Relationships are community-based relationships, friends. I live in a place where I, for a long time, was challenged in that area. And now I'm kind of in a good place with it all. I enjoy the relationships I have here. And I enjoy the tennis relationship. My neighbors, um, last night my power went out again and uh, I really don't have a good time with that. And I was texting my neighbor until my texting went out because I live in a place where I don't have Wi-Fi or a cellular service. I don't have cellular service. But she was helpful, really helpful to me. You know, it, just knowing there was somebody there because when my power goes out, it brings up old stuff about not being safe in my, when I was living in my house, I'd never felt safe in my home. And that was because my father shot a gun at my mother, tried to kill her, tried to kill my, you know, almost killed my brother and a lot of other stuff that went on in that house. So it brings up old stuff for me. So I have to get really clear in the moment about that and then move on. So think about community relationships and how you can shift them and you shift them with yourself. So think about what you want. Now go to, um, we did health, we did home, go to home, home. So home to me is where you live. If your place is in disarray and unorganized, start organizing it. Because I don't know any spiritual person that can really operate in a place that's unorganized. We, we don't operate well in it. It was always amazed to me when I would go for some like psychic readings and their place was a mess. And I'd be like, holy mackerel, how do you, how do you operate in this? How could you? I remember there was one woman who wanted to like partner up with me for something. And I went to her house and I was like, I, I can't because I can't operate in that. Now, some people may be able to. They actually, it's funny. You know what? Most mediums and psychics homes that I went into, their place was always unorganized. I, I can't do it. It doesn't work for me. Maybe it works for you. So if that's the way it works for you, great. Just love your home. 
sprinkle a little bit. What do you want in home? A lot of people don't want to be in the homes that they're in. They want to be in a different home. So what's your goal there? What is your goal? So now here's the thing that I'm going to tell you. So I, you know, I think about my goals and about what I want to do, thinking about my choices. And I was listening to um, a class that I bought and I bought it two years ago and for some reason just started listening to it yesterday. And he was talking about how easy it is to make decisions, how easy it is to decide on things and how easy it is to decide not to do things. And if your life is a mess, and there's certain areas of my life that really need to be cleaned up, that's on me. I need to make those changes. So I thought about that. (laughs) And then I started reading this great book and it started talking about doing habits and creating habits that move the needle forward and how important it is. It's called Atomic Habits, the book, how important it is to move the needle forward in little increments get good habits. And I'm, I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. So think about those four areas of your life. You're in the driver's seat. The universe is waiting to turn on the navigation system, to put the map in the glove compartment, but they're waiting on you. Like you turn on that navigational system. It's not going to tell you where to go unless you put a destination in. So put a destination in for home, career, relationships, and health. And then let it go. And then build on the journey towards that destination. Do little habits every week. We started, we talked about this in Membership for Your Soul. I I did a live in there just now. And we talked about how every week, um, build on it. Something simple. Maybe with your health, it's making sure that you drink uh, a glass of water a day. So buy a water bottle that holds that much water. I know somebody who I'm, uh, is my mastermind. She's got a water bottle and it, it tells her where she's at. It's got lines drawn on it. And she walks around with this big water bottle drinking it. So do that. Say it's uh, finances. You're going to not hide your head in the sand about your debt. You're going to write it all out in an Excel sheet. I did that last year because I have some business stuff that I've invested in and I did it again. And by the way, I paid a portion of it off. Great. It's great to see. And I have a plan, you know, so do that. So make a decision right now in this driver's seat where you want to go and then little habits that you're going to commit to do. And I don't want them to be huge. Like I'm going to run every single day. If you've never run, I'm going to walk 10 minutes a day and I'm committed to that. And maybe you don't take all four sectors because sometimes that's a little bit too much. You take just one. So a lot of times like health and fitness leads to love relationships and community or organizing your office leads to financials getting in organized because you're organizing something, you know, so pick one area and pick something that you're going to commit to. Now put the car in drive and make it happen. So what's happening for us is more than ever, I feel we are in control of our lives. Now I say this, and I'm sure that that's going to ruffle up some feathers with people, but I have to say it because if I feel this is how control works for me, I'm in control of my choices. I'm in control of my habits. I'm in control of my mindset. I'm in control of how I think about things. I'm in control of how I receive things. I'm in control of who I hang out with and who I don't hang out with. Some of you don't have that because you may have families, but you are in control of how you feel with that particular family member, right? I I am very uh, independent where I'm like, eh, sorry, done with you. You know, I, I need a break. I'm not going to be talked to this way. Um, But I know a lot of my community, they live in households and stuff. And and we talk about how that can be taxing. They love their family, but it can be taxing on their energy. A lot of of energy, a lot of sensitive people, a lot of psychics, a lot of mediums. We can't be around people 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And when you've got kids and you've got a family, that's freaking hard. So you've got to cultivate. Maybe what you're promised to yourself is five minutes alone. And everybody in the family, this is what I teach in Soul Finder Academy. I teach people how to take boundaries back, how to have boundaries, how to take their space back. 
even if it's just five minutes. I teach them how to say no to things that they don't want to do anymore. I'm teaching you ultimately freedom, freedom in your own heart and your soul. So spirit wants you to know that, that you're in the driver's seat. So the control you have is how you manage your life, how you deal with yourself. It's also how you feel about your dreams, how you identify with yourself. Stop identifying with the story of, I am, uh, blah, 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 blah. That's not serving you. Like I was, I was reading in this book last night, he was talking about smokers and the people that quit smoking. I quit smoking. Really, I quit a very, very long time ago, but, but I used to be like then social. I'd smoke a little bit and then wouldn't smoke for six months. And then I'd smoke a little bit and then wouldn't smoke for a year. I haven't smoked at all in over eight and a half years, right? So for me, it's been like 20 years, but then really, and it's not even a thought. Like I wouldn't even, I can't stand the smell of it actually. And he said something, it's because he's like, when people identify that they're not a smoker any longer, it becomes easier. Instead of I'm trying to quit smoking, I'm not a smoker. So this I read in Atomic Habits. I can't take credit for that. Um, so when I was like, he's right. Because when I chose, that was it. Because I tried quitting before. For, I actually quit January of 2001. And was that social person. I didn't smoke for like a year and a half. And then whatever. It doesn't matter. Like I very, very um, off more than on. But it was when I decided eight and a half years ago. I was like, I'm friggin' done. I don't identify with this anymore. That was a choice I made. Think about those choices. So who do you identify? How do you identify yourself? Identify yourself with the future self, with your higher self. If you want to be um, in great physical shape and have great energy, I am in great physical shape. I am. Now, some of that sometimes is hard to believe because maybe you're really struggling. So you may want to find something that really sits well with you. I am somebody who's really working towards being in great physical shape. I am someone who believes that I can be in, in really healthy and have energy. I am someone who's beginning to believe that I can really have my energy back, whatever it may be. But instead of, I can't do it, or I am, you know, I am not that person. Let's be that person. So the universe is putting you in the driver's seat. It's telling you you have more control because you have control over your own choices, your own habits your own decisions. And then they're asking you to listen to the inspiration, which is your guides and stuff, the, the, the inner dialogue, and then put the car in drive and go, go. And then this is where a little bit of trust happens. So for me, the way it shows up in my life is um, I have my destination. I'm in the driver's seat. I have the inspiration. Go write this email, put the car in drive. I go and write the email. Nobody responds. Okay. What's the next inspiring thought? What's the next thing? I don't look at it as I, I used to look at it as a failure. Instead, I'm like, all right, well, that, that person's loss, whatever I have to tell myself. And then I'm like, what's the next thing I need to do? Oh, okay. I do that. Then I do the next thing. So then you're just continuing on. And I've let go of the destination because I'm just listening to the guidance as it's coming. And I'm in the journey of my life. And then I'm moving forward. So that is what I feel you need to do. So what's interesting about this is, um, for me, it was, it's, I don't listen to people's prophecies at all. I don't get readings. And I was talking to a friend of mine who's a healer and stuff. And so I don't know what people's predictions are for 2021. I haven't listened to anything except for my own guides. And uh, I didn't say anything to her. She just happened to say to me, you know, we don't know the future. It's been wiped clean. None of us know the future. And I went, wow, it always fascinates me when I do do, when I hear that from somebody else and I'm like, oh, that's the mass consciousness. It is out there. So the truth that I've been hearing is the truth that other people are saying, and I have respect for her wisdom. And then usually when I do these predictions with uh, Jennifer McLean, she usually shares that other people on there have shared similar things. And I'm like, oh, that's so cool. It's so cool that we're all like coming up with the same thing. So that to me is not a scary thing. That to me is like that blank slate. You're getting to paint it. You're getting to draw it in. And, and most important thing I think I want to share with all of you is that you can. It's very important to me. Like I said to my community right before I did this podcast in membership, I said, 
you're all so incredibly gifted. And I, and again, I like, I don't care where you are in the spectrum. We all have the capacity to live our gifts. I always tell you my mission in life is to get everyone to believe that the dreams in their heart are meant to be lived. The cat, the, 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 but to that is it, but it's not going to look the way you think it's going to be even better than you imagine if you follow that path and you believe in it. So what I want you to do is to let, invite that blank slate in, invite that blank slate in and see it as your soul and start coloring it in, start lighting the way, start making the decision, stop looking at external sources to tell you what you need to be or who you need to be. Instead, you decide. And then like I shared in membership, because we have a lot of great readers in there and coaches and healers. And I said, you know, and some of them, I was took off for three weeks. So some of them did readings and stuff in there. They, you know, there's always bonuses going on in there where people are doing readings and stuff. We have to, somebody has been a membership for a year. We allow them to um, facilitate groups and things like that. And uh, I was watching one of the women do the reading, Sandra Paley. And um, I was like, oh, you know, I got to see like 10 minutes of it. And I was like, oh, it's so great. She's doing such an incredible job. And w- what I love about my community is they're not telling you how to be or what you can be or can't be. Somebody's coming to her with a question and she's giving tools and techniques to be the best at it or helping you to see a way that you can't see. That to me is where I would like to see people if if you need, and we all need outside sources at times, we all need classes, we all need coaches. Look at me, I hired a therapist last year. I have a coach, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But when I go to my coach with a question, I'm the ultimate decision maker, even with a therapist. So I go to them and I can't see the way. And this just happened recently. I'm going to share a story. Then I, they tell me, and then I'm like, I try it off his eyes. And if I don't like it, I'll be like, Hey, wait, I don't really like this. So I had actually, um, my coach does Q and A's and stuff. And I'd asked a question about my business and something. And, um, I didn't get to watch it. I usually watch them right away. And I watched it just yesterday. And I was like, I didn't agree with the, the advice. He doesn't, he's an amazing coach. I love him, but he doesn't necessarily know my model or where I'm going. So I didn't get upset about it. Doesn't mean he's, a, he's an incredible coach. I'm learning so much from him. I'm so glad I'm part of this mastermind. So instead what I did is I contacted his, uh, his partner who does his, and I said, you know, I need an appointment with him because I have to discuss this with him. And I also have to discuss something else with him, but I wanted to bring it up because he did bring up a point that I thought was really good for me that I never thought of, but I don't want to do it in the way he laid it out. And I don't have to, that's free will. And he's not the type of coach that's going to be like, you got to do it this way. No, he's great. So you find those teachers, you find those coaches that give you room to play and they hand you the tools and the techniques when you're stuck, when you're not seeing the way and they help you to see it. And then you move forward. One of the things that and I do do readings in my programs, you know, group readings. One of the things I loved about my guides is somebody would come to me for a reading and I would tell them they wouldn't, they, I didn't know their only thing I knew was their first name because somebody else booked them. I didn't know anything about them. I didn't know how they came to me. I didn't want to know anything. They weren't even allowed to speak for the first 30 minutes, first 20 minutes, I'd say of the reading. I just told them everything I got. And then when I gave them an opportunity to speak, they usually would say, oh my goodness, yes. And then they would, I'd say, what are your questions? I'm like, well, you answered most of them. <laughs> so I loved that. And what I loved about that is they were not believing that they were meant to be a writer. They were meant to be an artist. They were meant to be an actress. They were meant to be a mother. They were meant to be a father, whatever it may be. And I love the fact that I was able to help inspire them in their truth, that they got to sit in their truth. And then what I loved about my guides is they always gave techniques and tools on how to move towards that truth. That's the kind of people you want to be around. That's the community you want to be around where somebody is reflecting back your truth, helping you to see it when you don't see it. Because many times, you know, we we, we come from, I came from really a lot of low self-esteem, man. I was called a loser and every name in the book. I had to really fight out of that friggin' thing. And then you start when, when I had teachers and mentors that saw things in me that I didn't see. And then I started believing in myself. And then I continued getting help and learning and educating myself and getting the tools and the techniques to walk on the path, to have the courage to walk on the path, to have courage to take the risks. Do you know how many times, like, especially when I was being shopped around for my own TV show? Oh my goodness, man. 
Talk about those meetings. I would walk out. I went into a meeting once. It was with, uh, I think it was We Network. And I don't remember people's names, which I'm going to stop saying. I'm going to start saying I can. And I'm in the reading and I have to read the executives, right? So you got tough executives that have seen every medium on the book. I think, isn't We where Teresa Caputo's on? And um, one uh, one of them was giving me a hard time. And I turned around and I was like, you know, you're a bitch. I called her a bitch. But everybody laughed. I did it in a funny way. But I'm in my space of reading. And then the other woman, I was like, you're pregnant. You're having a girl. And uh, she was. And then she, I said, but you don't know the name yet. And she's like, no, I don't. And I said, whatever you do, don't name her Jennifer. That was her name. I forgot. I completely forgot. And she's like, well, that's my name. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my goodness. So I walked out of that meeting and it wasn't my best readings at all. It really wasn't. I wasn't fully on. It was personality wise. It was definitely on because when you go into these, these things, they want to see your personality and that you haven't seen a lot of that personality and I'll bring it more into my podcast, which is why I listed it as comedy and it's been anything but funny. But I left that meeting and I remember standing in the parking garage with the producer who barely knew me. That was the other thing. It was a hard meeting because when I was shopped around before, the producers really got to know me and I really got to know them and we built a great rapport. Heather Schuster, I friggin' love her. And um, Adam, what's Adam's last name? I can't remember right now. But anyway, this producer I didn't know very well. So I was standing in the parking lot with them. I don't know. They're shopping me around. They barely know me. This was a big meeting. I felt like I bombed it a bit. I mean, I just called the executive a bitch. Told the other one that she shouldn't name her kid Jennifer when that was her name. And it was hard. It was a hard moment. And I still have to keep my wits about me because I'm still with the producer while I'm waiting for my car to take me to the airport. And I was like, oh my goodness, you know, and she's like, that was great. It was perfect. They saw your personality. That's what we wanted. And um, you have to have guts. You have to have courage. And I left that and flew home. And by the way, before that meeting, the day before that meeting, the normal person that would take care of my dogs are, can be difficult. The normal person was supposed to take care of my dogs wouldn't do it because my dog almost bit him. So I had to find somebody else. And I found this woman and apparently my dogs weren't doing well with this woman. I thought, oh, she's great. She doesn't take them for walks because that was what happened. He was trying to take her for a walk and she tried to bite him. And um, she's sending me videos all night before the meeting of my dog freaking out in her house every time she left the house because she wasn't there. And I didn't know that. And so my dog's gotten a little bit of separation anxiety and she's got cameras on and she's sending me the videos. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I got to go to this big meeting. So then I go to this meeting, whatever. So it was like not the, the best 24 hours. It was a very tumultuous 24 hours. I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm calling the other dog walker. I'm like, you're going to have to go get her. I don't know what to do. And um, those are moments when I drive to the airport, was going to the airport, and I just lean into my guides because I'm not feeling great. I'm not feeling phenomenal, but I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to throw in the towel. And at that point, during that particular meeting, I'll share other meetings with executives soon because some of them were so hysterically funny and some of them were such bombs. <laughs> um, I didn't care too much about a TV show anymore. I had already given that, like they came towards me, they came for me and I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And they flew me and all that. But, and I didn't get the show. It took like three or four weeks for them to decide. Um, but it didn't matter because I didn't put my eggs in that basket. I had already decided that I wasn't waiting for a TV show to get my word out there, my message out there and um, all of that. But my point of the story is, is that that would be considered a big moment in my life. And I didn't crumble. Instead, I learned from it. I moved on and I didn't allow it to identify me. I didn't allow it to shape my personality or my opinion about myself. I learned to love myself through it. And I learned to let it go and move on. And I also learned to see possibilities. I mean, think about it. For those of you, who are, I, I know a lot of actors, right? And auditions mean everything because that could change your life. And for the longest time when I was being shopped around for my own show, I had that feeling like, oh my goodness, it's going to be my ticket. And then when like I would have deals on the table and then they would go away and I'd be like, you know, I was like, I'm done. I'm done with living my life according to this plan. And it was the freeing moment. And it and I didn't care. Honestly, did not care. And for me, that's where you find solution. Whereas other people may look at that like, oh my goodness, 
that's the worst thing. But for me personally, I was done with LA and I felt like I had to be in LA in order to be around these companies. Once I made that decision, I had the freedom to move. And then I moved. And I'm so glad that I'm living where I'm living during what's going on in the world right now. And I've been thinking about it lately, but every time I say to my guides, I'm going to stay, they make something happen. where They push me out of here. So I'm not going to say that, but instead I'm going to say, I'm really happy about where I am right now. I have these beautiful trails and hikes and woods, and I have incredible tennis. I'm playing so much more tennis than I did in LA and really fun people. We're laughing all the time and having a great time playing tennis. Wasn't like that in the beginning. I'll tell you the bitch story in a minute. Well, at another time. But so something that could have been atrocious was anything but. So look at everything as an opportunity for growth, expansion, something bigger and greater. Change your mindset around it. This is what I teach in SAS and Soulfinder Academy. I would love, love, love if I'm going to be doing Facebook Lives again, Marilyn Aloria One. I don't do them every week, but I'm going to start doing them a little bit more. I'd love for you to come join me in my communities if my um, teaching speaks to you. And remember, a membership for your soul, it's a lot of teachers in there. What I would really love is to hear what you're committed to. And sometimes we don't want to share. I personally don't share my goals with people because they're private for me and my guides. But even just send me an email saying, I'm committed. I'm changing a habit. Give me one habit that you changed. One habit that you're committing to changing. Um, I'll be doing a Facebook Live. Say, I don't know when you'll be listening to this. You're actually going to listen to this Thursday. So I'll be doing a Facebook Live probably the following Tuesday. Usually it's Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time, but that may change. My Facebook page is Marilyn Aloria One. That's my business page. Um, so that's what I have to say. So you're in the driver's seat. The slate is clean. You have a fresh start, new start. You're sitting in the driver's seat of your luxury car. You're going to decide what you want to change in those four sectors of your life. Career, career could be anything, how you're of service, how you spend your time, home, how you live in your home, relationships, family, friends, and health going to make a decision, what you want, what you would love to see at the end of the year without attachment. And then you're going to change a tiny habit, which I got from, I never called them habits. For me, it was choices. And then when I was reading um, Atomic Habits, he calls them habits. And I really like that. So I'm taking his word, not mine. And you're going to take a habit in each one and commit to it and do that habit and not give up on that habit and not expect the dream to come to fruition just by changing a habit. That's what he talks about. It's a great book. All right, guys, thank you so much. And I would love to hear from you. You can email me at info at who can it be now podcast.com info at who can it be now podcast.com. Have a great day or night whenever you're listening to this. Bye.